In this video, we are going to learn how to use the iBooks app. The iBooks app is going to be the same across all the platforms. So whether you're on an iPad, iPad mini, iPhone, or iPod touch, it's going to work the same. So first off, we're going to launch iBooks. You can see it launches to a pretty cool looking bookshelf. One of the reasons I'm a huge fan and most people are huge fans of Apple is obviously the interface. So this is hands down the best interface of any e-reader on there. So we're going to get a chance to look at all the books that we've got on a shelf. Another way to view these up here, you're going to see we're having an, uh, we have the ability to look at these in a list view as well. Um, I prefer the, the bookshelf. It's a little bit more realistic, you know, as realistic as it's going to get on an iPad. Uh, so you can see another button over here, edit. If for some reason we want to delete a couple of these books, well then we can delete them or we can move these books where we might want to move these books to. We'll just go ahead and try We've got some options to create some categories, books, purchase books, and PDFs is what you see right here just normally. So if I wanted to create a new one, let's say these are personal growth. You can categorize your books just like you would on any bookshelf, put compilations, put everything together that you might want to, uh, however you want to. So I'm going to put done on that. You can see your collections are right here. The one we've just created is personal growth. So let's assume you don't have any books in your bookshelf uh, like we've got here. How would you actually get some books in here? Up here we've got the store icon. And if you've seen any of our other videos related to the App Store or iTunes, any of those, they all really relate in a very similar way. Apple does a great job of setting these up so they're very similar. If you know how to use one, you're going to know how to use all of them. So obviously we're going to have some editor's choice, some, some new books out there, some deals. Uh, some other ways to browse the content, the New York Times, the top charts, top authors. We can go by categories up here, uh, genres, and we can also search. So pretty easy to, to, to navigate around here. If you've ever downloaded a book and purchased one and maybe you had deleted it and two years later you want to read it again, you've got the option with the purchased side right here to actually re-download any of the books that you've already purchased. So. Let's go back, go ahead and find some, some books that you want to read, and once you've got them, let's open up a book and get a little bit more familiar with how we go about reading this book. So, pretty simple. You can see we've got the book right here. What I did is I tapped the screen. We've got some, some controls right here, but first we're just going to learn how to uh, read a book. Pretty simple. Once we're in the book, just turn the pages just like you would any other book, or you can tap the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen to turn the page. I like doing the, the page turn. You know, a lot of people love that, that book feel to it, so it's as close as you're going to get there. Uh, so when you're reading, if you're like me, you like to make some highlights. You might want to underline something. You might want to actually take a note on something. Depends on what book you're reading. Maybe you're reading for school. Maybe you're reading for pleasure. But if you do want to, there's a couple of different ways that we go about doing this. First, you can double tap and start sliding your hand get the option to highlight just like you would any text on your iPhone or iPad. You get a bunch of different options that come up once you've uh, selected the text. So one of them is highlight. If it was a single word, we could define that word. We could copy this text and actually send it to somebody else or to our clipboard. And you can see over here we've got note and share. If we wanted to email this to a friend, it was a really great part of the book. It's going to email that with some information about the book. We can also message it through iMessages, Twitter or Facebook, or just copy it to the clipboard. So another way to do it, push and hold, and now your finger becomes the highlighter. So you can see right now we've actually had this underlining. So go ahead and tap where you were uh, just highlighting or underlining. And we've got some options. If we wanted to change that to a different highlight color, pretty simple. We can change the colors around to whatever we want. Uh, once we select it again, you can also see we've got our notepad. Again, the share icon, which we just saw. But if you wanted to take a note, this was a great section. You can save that note. You notice it stays up over here. You can see on the next page we have a couple of notes and highlights. So let's assume we read this book and we want to go back and actually tell somebody about a specific section in here. All you need to do is tap the screen when none of the controls are available. It's going to bring up some of our other options. You can see we can go back to our library, which we don't want to do yet. But if you click the button right next to it, you're going to have an option to look at the table of contents, browse through the book. 
you're going to get to go back and see all of your bookmarks, which I'll come back and show you here in just a second. And we'll also show you the notes. So anytime you've highlighted anything, you're going to get to see that. Anytime you have a note, you're going to see it written right here. You're going to also uh, be able to read those pretty quickly uh, based off the color of the highlight and then also the text right below it. So it makes going back through and rereading a book or getting the major, major points of it really simple. So the last thing is, again, going to be the bookmark. You can see up here, the bookmark right here. We can bookmark as many times as we want, uh, which makes it pretty nice to, again, put some 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 landmarks within the book uh, of sections you really enjoyed. We can search the book for a page number or a, ty a type of word, and it's going to find it within that book. So again, it makes it really easy. And then lastly, we've got some options based around how we're going to look at each page. We can adjust the brightness. You can adjust the size of the font. So if your eyes are tired or you just can't see them, you can make the font significantly bigger. You can change the font. And then most important, we've got some different themes. Night theme is definitely nice at night because obviously it takes a lot less of that backlight uh, to read. Uh, makes it pretty easy on the eyes. I prefer sepia. Looks a little bit more like a book. So, and again, that's why I like reading on the iPad. It's pretty close to a book. Makes it easier to read. So I like that color over the white. And then some different options of actually how you want to read your book. You can have the pages flipping like a book. You can have full screen. None of the other stuff there. No distractions. Similar to a Kindle, or you can actually have it scrolling, uh, which is pretty easy as well. So that is it. Good luck switching over to the digital bookshelf of iBooks and hopefully this tutorial got you started.